It's Roman, our funny productions here with the Teardown on the Martinsville STP 500. Let's dig into stage one here, folks. The 18 takes the lead from the 78 at lap 5 with a lap 50 competition caution. After that, when the, the 11 of Denny Hammond leads off a of pit road, the 11 dominates throughout stage one. But Brad Keselowski did give a run for his money. Pretty good racing in stage one. Hard nose racing. It came down to the last couple of laps. For Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, but Denny Hamlin had the better car off the corner. So, for stage one results, we're going to go 11. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Dinger, we got Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, and the 48 of Jamie Johnson. When those pit stops happen, the 12 of Ryan Blaney runs off a pit road. The number 11 of Denny Hamlin takes the stage lead on to two. On lap 17, and basically everything gets strung out from there. Um, at one point in time, there was a uh, the 12 of Ryan Blaney did take the lead. Sorry if I don't if I forgot to damn put the laps in there, but the 12 was also dominating throughout the race as well, and the 78 and the 11 started to fade back a little bit. Not too much there. Stage 3 is where it gets interesting. Stage 3 leads due to Ryan Blaney on lap 287 to 14 takes point. And then around lap 384, the one of Jamie McMurray causes a caution due, due to contact to Austin Dillon. 14 basically takes the lead off of Pitt Road and under yellow. And then we got Clint Boyer taking the lead and taking the win from Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick. The 22 of Joe the 88 of Alex Bowman, the 47 of Dinger, the 9 of Chase Elliott, and running at your top 10 is Brad Keselowski. This snaps a 190 race winless streak from Clinton Boyer. Uh, let's dig into the points here, guys. We got the 4, 78, 14, 3, and the 18. Mind that the 18 has the most points in the standings. We're basing off of the wins than most points. We got the 12, the 22, the 2. The 11, the 42, the 41 of Kurt Busch, the 10 of Eric Arola, 20 of Eric Jones, the 88 of Bowman, the 21 of Paul Menard, and the 31 of Ryan Newman rounding out the top 16 if the playoffs were to start today. Um, yeah, um, basically, stage one was probably the most entertaining at some point, and you couldn't really do much about... um about stage two and stage three. Clint Boyd just had a good restart on the outside and Kyle Bush once stage three started. Um and then there was another caution. We got another run from Clint Boyer again on the high side. So he was able to make that high lane work for that one lap. Uh the racing on Martinsville, typical racing on Martinsville, there's some beating some banging. There was a brake check in stage three. With um, Kevin Harvick brake checking Danny Hamlin, causing some front bumper damage. Uh, Danny Hamlin was a little bit upset after the post race, but I think he was able to handle it pretty professionally. Uh, not really, not really mu much um, surprise. What I what I was surprised with was Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott was really struggling throughout the day. He got a lap down at one point around stage one and two, and was able to make. A good run in stage three. I guess the nine car had a good long run car at the end of the day. But the 78, the 78 of Martin Church Jr. had a good short run car and it started to fade away. They couldn't get the handle for the long run for the short run. But the class of the field was the 14, uh, the 12 of stage two, and then the the 11 was pretty good. I, I, I really believe that the front end damage was really a critical point for Denny Howard to come back. Because I think... That, I think Denny Hamlin was probably the next best car next to Clint Boyer. So again, congrats to Clint Boyer. I went through the points already. Um, we're going to go on to Texas in two weeks. We do have the Easter break, so please enjoy your holiday if you do celebrate it. Um, again, I just want to do a quick thank you to everybody who's been watching my videos the last couple of weeks, the food reviews and the food reviews. I'm checking my Instagram posts, my Facebook, my Snapchats. If you guys do check them out, it's Keep Roman Roman K E E P R O V E N R O L I N. 
R48 Productions is my Facebook. I also have iOS Fortnite, which is the same as my Facebook. And then Instagram, Twitter, you now is Romans RR. Go check that out. That was awesome. What am I looking for? The Texas. The domination of Kevin Harvick and Martin Trix Jr. I can't see anybody else really going anywhere else. Maybe Kyle Bush. And I always gonna give the nod to Jimmy Johnson. He's pretty good at Texas. Don't be surprised if Jimmy Johnson gets on a tear. But again, give the Camaro some time. Uh, top ten surprise, probably not. Maybe I'm gonna give it to Almond Digger and Alex Bowman. You know, Almond Digger's always been pretty good. He's always finished in the top ten of Martinsville races. You can if you look back in the stats. You can see that he is consistently consistently well at, at Martinsville. Fox Sports, uh, Daryl Walter, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Joy mentioned that AJ Almendinger had a road course experience, and that probably came into play into um, the race. Uh, mind you that this race was ran on Monday afternoon instead of its regular Sunday due to the snowing. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that really made a huge difference throughout the run. Um I think Fox Sports was making a big, big issue, not issue, but a big news reel about warming up the cars and stuff and making a huge difference. We did have some issues with one car that had a radio issue. I think that was Austin Dillon. I'm pretty sure it was Austin Dillon. I think Austin Dillon had some radio issues. Um, Austin Dillon was actually good before at Martinsville before today. But due to the radio issues during stage one, he did not do so well. Uh, not really much else has happened. This is a typical Martinsville race. Uh, pit road was narrow. There was contact between Amarola and Harvick, but Harvick was able to rear pretty well. And also uh, Kyle Busch almost getting hit by Cole Witt in the 72 during stage one pits. So not really too action-packed. There wasn't really much of a bump and run thing. Fox Sports tried to uh, heighten the Kyle Larson and Kevin Harvick bump and run early in stage one. They tried to make a big deal out of that. That's just racing. You know, so. I think that's basically it. I think I, I covered everything. Oh, what lap was that one right there? I'm trying to remember the lap from. Uh, yeah, this was in stage two. Yeah, stage two was when Ryan Blaney took the lead from Danny Hamlin and then uh, Ryan Blaney. Took off pretty well. So, congrats to, congrats to everybody who's been racing the, those three stages. It wasn't one person who was dominating, but Clint Barter just had that long run car. He always stays in the top five. He was always there throughout the whole run, so it paid off for him. I, I think Ryan Blaney was really underrated today, but... uh. You know what? Let's just go on to Texas. Um, hopefully the race is good. I'm going to give this race a B-. minus. It wasn't the most entertaining race, but it was entertaining at some points. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and have a wonderful, wonderful Martinsville STP 500. Y'all take it easy. Love and peace out.